Okay, so we're coming into the story of Samson. We've nearly finished the book of Judges, uh, this book that covers the history of the church from the life and the ministry of Joshua right the way through to and possibly overlapping with the life and ministry of Samuel. Uh, and we're coming now to the last judge, to Samson, and he's the, he's the 12th judge, which means this is the, uh, the 12th time we've gone around this cycle that we've seen played out uh, again and again in the book of Judges, where uh, the land starts at rest, the people of God at rest, uh, but then they begin to follow the gods and, and the ways of the nations around them, and uh, the Lord oppresses, brings discipline into their experience. The people learn to cry out to the Lord. The Lord raises up a deliverer, and uh, the, the, the tyrants are overthrown, and uh, the, the church is back at rest in the land again. Um, and we've been through this now 11 times. Uh, and part of, part of the, uh, the tension of the book is, is the way in which the, you begin to feel frustrated with the church. It's like, guys, come on. Seriously, don't, don't, you, don't you realize that the best way to live is to live faithfully to the Lord, in covenant relationship with the Lord. But actually, I think that's one of the main, main points that comes through this book, that actually this is what the church's relationship with the Lord is looks like. That actually discipline is not just a one-off thing. Training, being trained to be the people of God is not a one-hit wonder. Uh, it's something that needs to happen again and again and again and again. You know, if you're a parent, you'll have seen this with your own kids. You know, uh, imagine hypothetically that a child is exhibiting a pattern of behavior that is a parent you're not entirely comfortable with. And then, I, I mean, I don't know what discipline looks like in your, in your home, but um, you enact discipline, and for a while, if it's effective, that pattern of behavior is repressed. And, but after a few days, or, or maybe a few weeks, you begin to see it reassert itself, and, and you have to engage with it again. And it's exhausting as a parent. Um, but actually, that's, that's the nature of things in, in this fallen world. And I guess one of my hopes is that as we've been going through the book of Samuel, that it's been helping you make sense of your own history with the Lord, your own spiritual experience of being in relationship with a God who is a heavenly Father, uh, a God who, because He loves us, uh, will not allow us to stay under the tyranny of our idols, will not allow us to stay enslaved to, uh, to our sin. Uh, he wants to discipline us. He wants to train us out of those things so that we can become the people of God that we are called uh, to be. Well, the book of Judges, I think, makes that point very emphatically. This is now the 12th time we've gone around this cycle. Um, and actually, it's not a cycle, is it? We've, we've made the point over and over again as we've gone through. It's, it's a downward spiral. That Every time we go around this cycle, actually, the situation deteriorates and degenerates. Until by the time we get to Samson, frankly, the whole thing is breaking down um, almost beyond recognition. Uh, I mean, the first thing is that the Lord has raised up the Philistines to oppress uh, the people of God. And they are in a, a period of oppression that has already gone on for like literally twice as long as any other, any other point in the, in the entire book of, of Judges. Uh, but what's really disturbing at this stage, uh, and this is your first clue that the cycle is broken down, is that the church never cries out to the Lord. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you might not even realize it's not there. But at no point... Does anyone cry out to the Lord for uh, deliverance? Uh, as we come into the story of Samson, the context is one of, of acceptance, uh, of a church that has reconciled itself to the fact that it knows nothing of the ways of God. It knows nothing of the presence of God. It knows nothing of the power of God. It, it is a church that has become satisfied living under the tyranny of the powers of the world around it and, and has, has become okay with that. Um, it lost, it's lost so much of their expectation of what it is to be the people of God, that they're, that they're in this situation and, and they've, 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 they've come to be like okay with that. They never call out, we're all right. They've so lost any sense of what they are called to be as the, the church, 
that they've learned to live with the situation uh, as it is. No, no one, no one is saying, come on, it's not supposed to, to be like this. They become satisfied with, with, with being a church, but with a complete lack of, of any meaningful sort of spiritual experience. They become satisfied with being the people of God and yet experiencing nothing of what God had promised that they would have when they came into the land. And then another sign that the situation has deteriorated um, almost beyond redemption now is that up until now, every time they've gone around this cycle and every time the church has cried out to the Lord, there's been someone in that generation whom the Lord is able to identify and raise up to be a deliverer, to be a judge. Uh, it might be like Gideon that, you know, the, the, there needs to be a bit of investment and a bit of training uh, in, in order for the Lord to equip someone to be the judge. But at least in that generation, there was uh, Gideon. But in this generation, there's, there's no one. The Lord has to go back a generation earlier, if you like, to, to find the parents of someone who will be born, who the Lord will be able to use as a judge, uh, as, as a deliverer. He has to recruit a family to bring a child up in the ways of the Lord so that they will be, be able to, in due course, deliver uh, the church. And what's really frightening is that in Judges 13, when the angel of the Lord comes to uh, Manoah's wife and then to Manoah as well, um, th they actually have no idea how to do what the Lord is calling them to do. They have no idea how to raise a child in the ways of God. How that would look any different from the way the kids are being brought up all around them. Judges 13 verse 8. Manoah prayed to the Lord. Pardon your servant Lord. I beg you to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. Can you, it's like, can you come and teach us how to bring this child up? In the ways of the Lord. We don't know how to do that. And it's not like they can look around and, and see for other people how to do that. No one's doing that. And, and you know, they've long since forgotten what the Bible teaches about how to bring children up in the ways of God. We don't know how to consecrate a child unto the Lord. And the angel of the Lord has to teach them and reteach them some of the most basic dynamics of Christian parenting. But maybe as you're reading the account of the angel of the Lord doing that, uh, actually not just teaching them how to parent, but teaching them how to bring up a child as a Nazarite, maybe, maybe you, you begin to, to get quite hopeful. You know, maybe you're thinking, oh, this is going to be brilliant, right? You know, here is the Lord. He's, he's not just identifying a judge who's already grown up, but you know, he's, he's deeply involved in the family, the background of this judge. This judge is set apart from birth as a Nazarite. The Lord is going to be deeply involved in raising this child um, all the way through to, to adulthood. We're going to see this guy who's anointed with amazing strength and skill in battle and who's phenomenal sort of spiritual resources and and this is going to be epic right finally the cycle of judges is going to be broken not because it's deteriorated beyond recognition but because finally here is someone who is going to lead the church uh, into faithfulness to the Lord not just during the time of their own life but beyond beyond even even that well if that's our hope if we dare to believe that that might be the outcome of the story of Samson then I'm afraid that we are going to be so very, very disappointed.